Hi again. Today we're going through section 4.2 in College Algebra, and this is going to be all about exponential functions. First, we're going to talk just a little bit about exponents. We're going to look at some exponential functions and their graphs, and we're also going to solve a few exponential equations. Here we go. First of all, let's look at example one. Here we have f of x equals 2 to the x. And this is an example of an exponential function, which we've not seen before. We've never had a function before where the variable was in the exponent. So here, let's evaluate f of negative 1. And that means that we will plug negative 1 in where the x is. So f of negative 1 is 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 over 2. And if we evaluate f of 3, that's going to be 2 to the third power, which is 8. Let's also look at f of 5 halves. So we'll have f of 5 halves equals 2 to the 5 halves power. Now we need to simplify this a little bit. So let's write it as 2 to the fifth power to the 1 half. You see 5 times 1 half is 5 halves, so we can always separate an exponent into two parts like that, and I think you may remember that from an earlier section where we saw a similar thing. So now we can write that 2 to the fifth power is 32, and the 1 half power is the square root. Remember to have a 2 in the denominator of an exponent is to have a square root. So now we have 32 to the 1 half, which is square root of 32. And this radical can be reduced. We remember that 32 is 16 times 2, and the square root of 16 is 4. So we have 4 times the square root of 2. And here in part D, we have f of 4.92. And to evaluate that, we'll have to do 2 to the 4.92 power. Well, you can evaluate this on your calculator. There's no good way to evaluate it in exact form like we did part C. But if you'll use the caret button on your calculator, you can do 2 to the 4.92, and that comes out approximately 30.2738. So what we did in example 1 was to evaluate an exponential function. An exponential function is one that's in the form f of x equals a to the x, where a is a positive number that's not equal to 1. Notice that we don't allow 1 as the base for an exponential function because if a were allowed to be 1, then the function would become the constant function because what we would have then is 1 to the x, and no matter what you would plug in for x, the function value would always be 1. 1 to any power is still 1. So this would not make an exponential function. It would instead make just a constant function or a horizontal line. Now we are going to look at the graph of this exponential function 2 to the x. Let's start by just making an xy table, and we will choose a few values of x that are convenient for us to graph. I've picked all the numbers from negative 2 to positive 3. So now if we plug negative 2 into our function, we're going to get 2 to the negative 2, which is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. And then if we plug in negative 1, we'll get 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 over 2. And then if we plug in 0, 2 to the 0 is 1. Then plug in the 1, 2 to the first power is 2. Plug in the 2, 2 squared is 4. And plug in the 3, 2 to the third power is 8. And now let's plot each of our ordered pairs. Negative 2 comma 1 fourth is going to be about here. Negative 1 comma 1 half will be about here. 0 comma 1 is here. 1 comma 2 is here. 2 comma 4 is here. And 3 comma 8 is here. And you can see that these are climbing steeply. So the graph of an exponential function has this basic shape. It can change in steepness depending on the base that you use, and we're going to see that in a minute but it has this basic shape. The x-axis becomes a horizontal asymptote for our graph. The y-values can never reach zero because there is no x-value that you can plug into this function to get a y-value of zero. But the bigger x-value you plug in, 
the more extreme the Y value becomes very quickly. And you'll hear people even in everyday language talk about something growing exponentially and this is what they mean. Things that are an exponential function grow very quickly as the X value increases. Now the domain of this function is negative infinity to positive infinity. Any number can be plugged in here. And the range, as you can see, is from 0 to infinity. But remember that we can never have a y value of 0. So when we write the range, we'll need to make sure and put parentheses on the 0. So not bracket 0 to infinity, but parentheses 0 to infinity, because we need to make sure that our range does not include the number 0. Now let's look at some important facts that we can notice about f of x equals 2 to the x. First of all, the y-intercept of this function is 0, 1. Right here is where it crosses the x-axis. That's because 2 to the 0 power equals 1. And if you think about it, any base to the 0 power equals 1. So what we're going to see in a minute is that all exponential functions, as long as they're not transformed in some way, will go through this point 0, 1. Also notice that 2 to the x is going to be positive no matter what value of x you plug in. Any x value you plug in will give you a positive y value. Now think about this. The more negative of an x value that you plug in, the smaller your y value will get, but it can never reach 0. It only can get close to 0. Therefore, the x-axis becomes a horizontal asymptote of our graph. Also, as the graph suggests, and we mentioned this before, the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range is from 0 to infinity. And notice again the parenthesis on the 0, because 0 is not included because this axis is a horizontal asymptote. And finally, the function is increasing on its entire domain, and therefore it's 1 to 1. And you know what that means. A function that's 1 to 1 is going to have an inverse function. And that's what we'll end up looking at in section 4.3. But see that this function is increasing on its entire domain. Now, let's graph the function f of x equals 3 to the x. And we'll do a similar thing. I've picked out the same x values for us to plug in. 3 to the negative 2 is going to be 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9. 3 to the negative 1 is going to be 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the first power is 3. 3 squared is 9. And 3 to the third is 27. So notice I've given us an extra big coordinate system here to work on. And let's plot the point negative 2 comma 1 ninth. Now obviously on a graph this small it's impossible to plot one ninth exactly but we can kind of estimate. So negative 2 comma 1 ninth I'll just make a dot very close to the x-axis and then negative 1 comma 1 third 0 comma 1 1 comma 3 2 comma 9 and 3 comma 27 and there is the graph of 3 to the x the domain of this function is the same as the domain of 2 to the x, negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range is still the same as 2 to the x, 0 to infinity, with, again, parenthesis on the 0. Now, just for comparison, I would like to plot for you y equals 2 to the x on top of this. You already drew it on a previous coordinate system, but I thought I'd just superimpose it here so you can see what it looks like. The graph of 3 to the x is just steeper than the graph of 2 to the x, but notice that they both go through the point 0, 1, and they both have the same domain and the same range. Now let's look at the graph f of x equals 2 to the negative x, and we'll see what's different about this function. So let's pick out, again, several x values that we can plug in. And so this time I'm going to plug in x equals negative 3. So 2 to the negative negative 3 will be 2 to the third, which is 8. 2 to the negative negative 2 will be 2 to the second, which is 4. 
2 to the negative, negative 1 will be 2 to the first, which is 2. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. And 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. Now let's plot our points, negative 3 comma 8, negative 2 comma 4, negative 1 comma 2, 0 comma 1, 1 comma 1 half, and 2 comma 1 fourth. And when we draw that, you can see that it's the same shape as the graph of 2 to the x. In fact, let me sketch 2 to the x for you again. And here it is. This is what 2 to the x looked like. And here is 2 to the negative x. So you can see that this new graph is simply the reflection of the original function flipped across the y-axis. It still has the same domain as the original function. The domain of our new 2 to the negative x is still negative infinity to positive infinity. The range of our new function is still 0 to infinity. And so it's the same graph, it's just flipped across the y-axis. Now let's look at f of x equals 1 half to the x power. And again, we will make an xy table. And I'll choose some x's for us to plug in. And if we plug in negative 2, we get 1 half to the negative 2, which is 2 to the positive 2, which is 4. If we plug in negative 1, we get 1 half to the negative 1, which is 2. If we plug in 0, we get 1. If we plug in 1, we get 1 half. If we plug in 2, we get 1 half to the 2, which is 1 fourth. And if these ordered pairs look familiar to you, they should because they are graphing the same graph that we looked at on the last slide, which was 2 to the negative x. So these two functions are actually the same function. How can 1 half to the x give us the same graph as 2 to the negative x? Well, it has to do with negative exponents. Think about it this way. 1 half to the x can be written as 2 to the negative 1 to the x because 1 half is 2 to the negative 1. And then using our power rule for exponents, we could say negative 1 times x is negative x. So 1 half to the x becomes 2 to the negative x, and they both will produce the same y value, so they both have the same graph. Now here is one that you could probably try on your own if you'd like to pause the video. And if you've had a chance to do it by yourself if you want to, now let's go through it together. We've got 1 fourth to the x, so we want to pick out a few x values to plug in. I'll plug in negative 2, so 1 fourth to the negative 2 is actually going to be 4 to the positive 2, which is 16. And then 1 fourth to the negative 1 is equal to 4. 1 fourth to the 0 is 1. 1 fourth to the first power is 1 fourth and 1 fourth to the second power is 1 over 16. And let's plot those ordered pairs. So we'll have negative 2 comma 16, negative 1 comma 4, 0 comma 1, 1 comma 1 fourth, and 2 comma 1 sixteenth. So now you can see that our graph is pretty steep. It's even a little steeper than our graph of 3 to the x was. Even though 3 to the x was turned the other way, you can still tell this is a little steeper. Now on this slide we have just several graphs of several different exponential functions and I want you to notice that as long as the base is a number greater than 1, the function will be increasing on its entire domain. And the larger the base is, the steeper the increase is. So we see that the graph of 10 to the x is much steeper than the graph of 2 to the x. But even though a larger base means that the graph will be steeper, they all have to go through the point 0, 1. Now if the base is a number that's between 0 and 1, then it's a fraction. And in that case, the graph will be decreasing on its entire domain. And the smaller the fraction, the steeper the decrease will be. So 1 tenth to the x is a steeper graph than 1 half to the x because 1 tenth is a smaller number. But in every case, they have to go through the point 0, 1. The x-axis will be a horizontal asymptote. 
The domain will be negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range is always parenthesis 0 to infinity. Now we're going to move on to solving exponential equations. Here is our process. We're going to write both sides of the equation with the same base and then set the exponents equal and solve. Now not every exponential equation in the world can be solved using this process, but all the ones we're going to see can be solved using this process. So let's look at this example. We have 1 third to the x equals 81. Now notice that both bases are powers of 3. 1 third is 3 to the negative 1, and 81 is 3 to the 4th. So let's rewrite the equation using a base of 3. I'll have 3 to the negative 1 to the x equals 3 to the 4th. Now using our power rule for exponents, we can say that 3 to the negative 1 raised to the x is the same as 3 to the negative x. Remember when you have exponent to exponent, you multiply. Okay, now here is the trick of all of these exponential equations. Once the bases are the same, you can say that if the expression on the left is equal to the expression on the right and the bases are the same, then it must also be true that the exponents are the same. So now we can just say negative x equals 4, and that means that x equals negative 4. Now let's try this again with 2 thirds to the x equals 9 fourths. In this case, you really just have to look at both bases and see if you can figure out how 9 fourths is related to 2 thirds. Well, I know that if I take 2 thirds and I square it, I'll have 4 over 9, which is the reciprocal of the number that I want. So the way to accomplish a reciprocal is with a negative. So I'm going to write 9 fourths as 2 thirds to the negative 2. Think about it, the negative will flip it over and the 2 will square it. Okay, now I have 2 thirds to the x equals 2 thirds to the negative 2. Since the bases are the same, the exponents must also be the same and x equals negative 2. Once you see the trick of it, that one's almost too easy. Let's try it again over here. Here I have 5 to the 2 plus 2x equals 25. Now I know that 25 is 5 to the second power, so I'm going to write 5 to the 2 plus 2x equals 5 to the second. So 5 to this power equals 5 to this power. These powers must be the same and now we will solve. So we'll subtract 2 from both sides, and that gives us 2x equals 0, which means that x equals 0. And by the way, you know, if you take your solution and plug it back in, it should work. 2 plus 2 times 0 is just 2, and 5 to the second power is 25, so it works. Now let's practice on these. This is example 5. We've got 2 to the x plus 4, equals 8 to the x minus 6. So I see that the base on the right side is a power of the base on the left side. The 8 here can be written as 2 to the third. So we have 2 to the x plus 4 equals 2 to the third to the x minus 6. Okay, now using our power rule for exponents, we're going to write the right side as 2 to the 3 times x minus 6. And now if 2 to this power equals 2 to that power, then the powers must be equal. So we set them equal and solve. So we'll distribute that 3. And now we will subtract x from both sides. And now add 18 to both sides. And divide both sides by 2. And we get x equals 11. And now try this one. 27 to the 4x equals 9 to the x plus 1. Notice that both of these numbers are powers of 3. 27 is 3 to the 3rd, and 9 is 3 to the 2nd. So here I'll have 3 to the 3rd to the 4x, and on the right side we'll have 3 to the 2nd to the x plus 1. Now, a power raised to a power means that these should be multiplied together. So we're going to get 3 times 4x on the left exponent and 2 times x plus 1 on the right exponent. Okay, now 3 times 4x is 12x 
and distributing the 2, we get 2x plus 2. So to solve this for x, we'll subtract 2x from both sides and divide both sides by 10, and x is 1 -fifth. Now this one we may have to think about for a minute because of the square root, but you can see that the left side is definitely a power of 2, and the right side is also a power of 2. So this square root of 2 can be written as 2 to the 1 half. And the right side has a base of 4, so that can be written as 2 squared. Now we have 2 to the 1 half to the x plus 4 equals 2 squared to the x. And you know we have our power rule, so we'll write 2 to the 1 half times x plus 4 equals 2 to the 2x. And now if 2 to this power equals 2 to this power, the two powers must be equal. So let's set the powers equal and solve. The first thing I want to do is eliminate this denominator of 2. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. That's going to cancel the fraction and leave us with x plus 4 equals 4x. Now I will subtract x from both sides and divide both sides by 3, and we have x equals 4 thirds. Now these last few are not truly exponential equations because their variable is not in the exponent, but it is in the base. And we've seen these equations before. We looked at equations like this that involved rational exponents way back in section 1.6. But let's have another look. So remember the idea is we want to cancel out this fractional exponent. So the thing to do is to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. So watch what happens when I raise both sides to the 3 fourths. These exponents multiply together and become 1. However, remember we had this rule that said whenever you raise both sides to the same power, if the denominator is an even number, you're essentially taking an even root of both sides and you must insert the plus minus symbol. Again, this is happening because the denominator on both sides is even, so it means we're taking an even root on both sides. So now we have on the left side x, and on the right side we have the fourth root of 81 raised to the third. So plus or minus the fourth root of 81 raised to the third. Now the fourth root of 81 is 3, and then the third power of 3 is 27, so we have plus or minus 27. And now let's check both solutions just so you can be sure. So I'm going to check 27. If I put 27 here, then the third root of 27 is 3, and 3 to the fourth is 81, so that's a check. And now let's check negative 27. So if I put negative 27 here, then the third root of negative 27 is negative 3, and negative 3 to the fourth power is still positive 81. So that's also a check. Let's try the same thing here. So we have x to the 5 thirds equals negative 243. To eliminate this 5 thirds exponent, we'll need to raise both sides to the 3 fifths power. Notice that this time I do not need to insert the plus minus symbol because the denominator of my new power is not even. So now I have x equals the fifth root of negative 243 all raised to the third power. Now the fifth root of negative 243 is going to be negative 3 and then negative 3 to the third power is negative 27. And we could check this one just like we checked the last one by putting negative 27 in place of x. And then the third root of negative 27 is negative 3, and negative 3 to the fifth power is negative 243. So that's a check. Now let's look at this last one. We have x to the negative fourth equals 1 over 256. Now we need to eliminate this exponent and we'll do that by raising both sides to the reciprocal power. So that's going to make us raise both sides to the negative one-fourth and because the denominator of that power is even, we will insert the plus minus symbol in front of the right side. 
Now look at this. We have a fraction raised to a negative power. And we know that a negative power simply accomplishes a reciprocal. So let's use that negative to flip our 1 over 256 over so it can be a whole number base. So 1 over 256 to the negative 1 fourth is the same as 256 to the positive 1 fourth. Now I'll write it in radical form and we can either finish it mentally or we can use the calculator but the fourth root of 256 is 4 so we have plus or minus 4. Now let's check both answers just to be completely sure. First we'll check negative 4 so I'm going to plug negative 4 in where the x was. Now negative 4 to the negative fourth is going to be 1 over negative 4 to the positive fourth which is 1 over 256, which is a match for the right side. So that works. And let's now check the positive 4. So I'll put positive 4 in place of x. We'll have 4 to the negative 4th. And 4 to the negative 4th is 1 over 4 to the 4th, which is 1 over 256. So that also checks. And our solutions are 4 and negative 4.